Good morning. Good morning. Hello. We are talking to you from inside the house today because I don't know if you can see it, but it's snowing and we are going to stay inside for this morning. Um, I've been thinking about the power of story this morning. Last night was the final night of Passover and my family gathered for a Seder and part of the ritual of the Seder is to tell the story of Moses and the exodus from Egypt and the escape from Pharaoh and the Red Sea parting and the Ten Commandments coming down and all these things. It's a pretty epic story if you've seen the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston or Prince of Egypt or any of the other tellings of it. You know it's a pretty epic story. and. Um, and I was thinking about the power of story. And so the image you're looking at, I should, I should clarify, is the ongoing power of story. When my family uh, in 1973 went to Europe, um, there's a really long story behind that, um, which I won't get into now. But um, when I was 10 years old, my dad and my mom packed us all up and the six of us went, to Europe for what we thought was a vacation and it was actually a learning a learning trip because the um, I won't say highlight because that's a tricky word for it but the point of the trip was for us to visit Dachau concentration camp and to see for ourselves that the Holocaust was not just a story However, this book that my, my mom made um, is filled with stories of that trip. There were hilarious stories and some weird stories and uh, some legendary stories, such as 10-year-old Rachel going through Europe eating only French fries and learning how to say French fry in several different languages. But the thing about Passover and our family stories, the thing about story is... It's essential to know our story. However, it's also essential to not be locked in to our story. I'm not 10 year old Rachel anymore. I do eat more than French fries. You know, we are not, um, we are not people in general who are in quote unquote bondage. We have the power to speak up. We have the power to change our lives. And, and so our stories, from the epic to the minute, don't have to be static. They don't have to stay the same. When we gather each year on Passover to tell the story, it's in it's our way of reflecting back to let's not do that again. In fact, my mom was commenting that last night's Haggadah, which is the you know prayer book guide for the Seder, we were using a sort of modern day one that had quotes from Desmond, uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Anne Frank and Martin Luther King. And these quotes and the message of the Seder was very timely to where we are right now in America and globally, however specifically in America, talking about pharaohs and talking about um, being given messages that are not true and allowing ourselves to fall into that sort of strange coma of it'll be okay if we just, you know, keep going along as we are. And we can't. We can't. And so... We learn from that story. We're not still stuck in that story. We read it, we look at it, and we reflect on it as it is today. And that's, I think, the point of stories, our stories, the stories of our relationships, the stories of who we've been, the stories of how we've behaved in the past. It's good to reflect on them, and it's good to see where we are now and what we've learned from them. And if we are still feeling stuck in that story, to then look at how to unstick ourselves from that story. 
if if I don't like the story of how I've been in the past, as the saying goes, we can change. You know, there there's a it, actually, the saying I was thinking of was if you're feeling stuck, move. You're not a tree. You know, we can we can change. We can adjust. We can shift. It's never too late. I just turned 55 years old, and I'm now getting my first BA degree in college. I'm ch thank you, Maddie. I'm changing the story of Rachel can't learn or Rachel's not smart. I'm changing that story. We can change our stories. So, so as you go through today, think about the stories of your life, the ones you love, the ones you hate. Think about how they work for you or they don't work for you and how you might want to add a new chapter or make some edits. There are, there's, there are no rules, even though that says it's a rule. There are no rules. Change your story up if you want to. All right, enjoy this. Uh, if you're in the snow belt, enjoy this snowy April 8th. And um, I wish you all peace. And Maddie says, what would you like to say, Maddie? Well, she says, have a lovely Sunday. <laughs> Sending you all peace.